Hello, it's Andy Graham. <laughs> Andy Graham, I'm with Bob, a real traveler. And I got a question here from, uh, let's see, I can't see the name, Robert, Robert something. I'm on my little new phone that I'm going to use to make a guidebook. I guess what worries me the most as a lone traveler that makes you, that makes you the most vulnerable. I think if you would do it, it would, I think, is what would I do if I was robbed of my ID cards and money in a place where I know no one? If you got completely robbed of everything and you had no money, no way, uh, I'll, I'll even include no backpack. And I've got Bob here. He traveled for eight years nonstop, been to 70 countries. I've been to uh, 16 years nonstop and uh, 90 countries. What do you think, Bob? <laughs> well, you know, this used to happen all the time. Uh, probably four or five times I was completely wiped out. Everybody, everything I owned, left naked on the sidewalk. <laughs> He's words. full of He's shit. <laughs> okay, come on, tell the truth. Uh, you go in to Mexico, the... in Mexico, when I was first in Mexico 16 years ago, they would take buses and drive them right into the woods, strip everybody of their clothes, and then take everything they got, period, and leave them sitting there. Yeah. Well, you know, you always hear stories like this. Oh, they were really bad when I first started traveling in Mexico. Yeah. That's the I've... only place I ever heard of that. <laughs> I heard about it in Guatemala, same thing, and then uh, Peru. In Peru for a while, when you got on the bus, They'd go with a video camera and take everybody's picture in their seat so that they could figure out who you were later if you were hijacked if you had hijacked the bus. Yeah, I heard in uh, Peru they'd actually climb into the uh, baggage compartment and rob you while you were moving down the road. Okay. You hear all these stories. Okay, so I I will answer this question because Bob's uh, sort of. No, I could. I you know I would go to the hotel and uh, tell the hotel manager what happened. If I didn't have a hotel then I would go to a hotel that I would have wanted to go to and explain to the hotel manager what happened and tell him I need to uh, just use a phone and I'll have money tomorrow. And uh, then, you know, you, you uh, for me, my safety system is I call my dad in Florida and he, we have a joint bank account and he gets a hold of the bank and they'd have to Western Union me some money overnight so I'd have cash within 10 or 12 hours probably. And uh, then uh, you'd have to work it out on the telephone with the bank and, you know, get a new bank card and all of that. You just, but the main thing is not to panic. I mean, uh, if you have the money in a bank in the U.S. or in Denmark or wherever you're from, you'll be able to get at it. Okay, what, what he's saying is completely correct, and that's the first thing I would do is I would go to a hotel, like a mom-and-pop hotel, outside the U.S., and normally you just say, hey, I'm a gringo or I'm a foreigner or whatever, and I said, I lost all my money, and they'll give you credit for two or three days. Or I've actually seen a guy in Ecuador go for. I mean, I was in. Uh, yeah, I was in Quito, Ecuador, one time, and the guy was there for like two months, still waiting for money. Uh, but me, uh, what what I would do because I have a, I already have a Western Union account I set up on the internet. I would just uh, go to the, my immediately because if they got all my credit cards and they got my. Uh, uh, my computer and everything they would I would need to start changing passwords right so you know you want to kill this card so what I would do instantly is go wire myself you can't really Western Union don't let you wire yourself money but they'll let you really wire to any name and anybody that so you gotta find somebody that, that you kinda trust I'm, I've been told that they even if you don't have identification they'll wire to anybody as long as they got that little code number so you really could technically wire to yourself. Now I used to have that Western Union account in my father's name and I used his account and, and just literally sent it to myself which was a better way to do it. So if your accounts, uh, if you set up an account with uh, Western Union with your father online, you could just go to any internet cafe and turn around and wire yourself money without even calling him. Mm. But you got to do this really quick because if the cards are being used, yeah. you know, you got to do this really fast. You want to cancel the cards right away. So I would send myself money, then cancel the cards really quick. <laughs> and then you have to, you know, uh, somewhere on an internet account, you should have your credit card numbers, your passport number if you don't have it memorized. And uh, contact the embassy and get a new passport or a temporary passport. And uh, the embassy a lot of times will vouch for you with, uh, with uh, hotels and stuff. Well, the embassy actually has, inside the embassy, I lost my pass, I got robbed of my passport in Madrid, Spain. 
and they actually have a picture of you on this uh, scanned in document. So they, they don't even need identification. So, and I got that in one day. But if you do walk to any embassy on the planet, don't talk Spanish, don't talk the local language, just start talking English at a mile a minute, and they'll get you right to somebody that speaks English really quick. They, I actually opened the embassy in Madrid because it was closed, but the guards didn't know what to do. Yeah, if you're an American, uh, uh, you show your American passport. There's always a line at the American emb embassy, no matter where you are. And they do not want Americans waiting on that line. There's an indoor waiting room for Americans. So you show your passport and you go, go right, right on in. By. Right in. They yeah, I was in Quito one time on the and the line was a mile long and the guy's like grabbing me out of the crowd. Right. They'll pull you right out. You just show them your, just hold up your American passport and they'll come get you and walk you right in. Okay, so y you can get your passport. It's not difficult to get a new passport. There's almost an embassy in every country. You're, yeah. Uh, getting new credit cards now, what would you do for getting new credit cards? How, how would you get? Well, that's uh, really a deal with you and your bank. Each bank is different. Uh, I have uh, two accounts, two ATM cards from two different banks. I use Charles Schwab most of the time, and I have a Citibank account, a uh, platinum credit card or something. And uh, Citibank is really good because you find them everywhere. They have offices in big cities all over the world. And uh, if you are a Citibank card holder, you can walk in and get a new Citibank card within 24 hours. And then at least you have a credit card. You can, you can get money off on the card, but it's expensive. But at least you can pay all your bills and everything with your credit card if you have Citibank. Schwab, you know, if, if you're thinking about traveling and you want a good ATM, talk to, talk to Chuck. Everywhere in the world, all your ATM fees are free. Uh, most, most credit card, most ATM cards, you have to pay a fee in foreign countries. But with Schwab, you don't have to hey, pay any fee. That's good to know. In fact, just the other day, I took money out. They charged me a dollar fifty, yeah. and I look on my statement and I see the dollar fifty fee, and right next to it, I see rebate dollar fifty. Charles cool. Schwab pays the pays Great. the fee for me. Great. So. Well. I have, if I, ha if I had my card store, I have, let's see, three, AT, uh, three debit cards right now from different banks. And my PNC Bank's one's real good because I can actually write a check that is mailed from the PNC to anybody in the United States and I can actually pay a bill through that thing. But, so I really like that one and I guess PayPal just sent me one. So I don't know, PayPal will probably get shut off in big <laughs> But the point is, I, I have two different backups there. My, my, uh, my mother and my, well, my father used to, but he just died. But my father, uh, my mother has, with the bank, has already got a power of attorney set up. And my sister's got a power of attorney set up. And they can just walk into the bank and do anything. And I would probably go to the bank and then just say, you know, uh, FedEx the uh, ATM card to me. I had one ATM card sent to me in the uh, Philippines one time. But I had them put it, I put it inside the book, inside a book, and then my mom kind of like taped the book shut and I sent a book. Yeah. Because they will actually charge you extra. DHL for sure will charge. I sent an a, a, a ATM card from Thailand to India one time for Andrew. And, uh, and Andrew, uh, Andrew, boy genius, and they charged me extra money because it was an ATM card. But this is what you're going to wind up having to do in a situation like that. It's like this. You're going to, like what Andy said, you're going to have to throw money at it. You're not going to have to throw a lot of money at it, but it'll seem like a lot at the time, and you'll have to DHL or FedEx or UPS the, uh, the card to your hotel or something like that. And, uh, but within a few days, you should probably get it straightened out. You hear horror stories of people where it takes them months. And I just don't know what to say about that. I'm not saying that they're lying. I'm just saying it's awfully hard to believe that somebody could be that incompetent. I, I don't wire money. I don't, I don't think I would ever have them wire me money. Yeah, you, uh, Western Union is very expensive, 10%. Yeah, but, but the, if the, you're in the, a jam, the truth is both of us are you know, low-budget travelers or whatever. We're basically economical. Um, the guy, I was in Guatemala, and this one Canadian lady was going to the ATM every single day of the week to get three or $400 because she was living in a... She had a, like a $200 a day budget. No, she wasn't really a budget. She was blowing two or three hundred dollars a day. Yeah. And you know, obviously, when you get above the um, two hundred, three hundred dollar a day budget, you have to use a you have to use credit cards. I mean, you can't pull all your money from the ATM all the time. I I, don't, I guess uh, what you always got to believe is there's there's the hotels that are ten dollars, fifteen dollars are nice hotels and you. you you got to get out of your brain that you're slumming it or you're hobo or you're some kind of bullshit. When you 
the hotel here is the, the cost of living here is say they they earn ten fifteen dollars a day uh, there's absolutely no reason you can't live on ten or fifteen dollars a day if the whole country is living on ten or fifteen dollars a day they have to have the hotels at ten or fifteen dollars a day yes. the, the hotels are not just for foreigners and tourists i mean when but you if see you if you wind up going to all foreigner and tourist hotels places you find on the internet mostly are foreigner and hor tourist hotels and they charge a lot more and uh, it's just a little fresher paint it's not any big difference you know would they give you credit some of the bigger hotels wouldn't even give you credit the large I, my experience is that if you go into a shop that sells shirts and the cheapest shirt is sixty dollars and the most expensive is hundred and ninety these guys take credit cards well, yeah, if you shop where I shop they don't take credit cards <laughs> <laughs> so I mean if you want to live on a three or four or five hundred dollar a day budget yeah I mean there are you know go but shopping in the lobby of the Hilton or, or wherever you are and yeah but don't you think if this guy got robbed of everything and he was on a four or five hundred dollar a day budget he would be shit out of luck he, yeah, it would take him a couple days to get, you know, I mean, he'd have to get somebody to wire him some money on Western Union, probably. Or if he has Citibank or American Express, you know, another you possibility. just go to the American Express office, identify yourself, and they'll give you a bunch of traveler's checks on your account. They'll do that. So a lot of people have American Express for, for, for that emergency. Reason. Yeah. And, uh, You're right. They, they can't with American Express. Yeah, American but Express. That, or <coughs> where's the local? In, in, we're in you'd have to go to Loja or Quito. So we, we're about 50 miles away from it. I think, generally, if you're an honest person and you're not an overwhelming drug addict, drunk, alcoholic, girl, whoremonger, all these crazy words, uh, most of the time if you, you found what I call the center of the backpacker universe or the center of the expat universe, in every city you ever go to, there's, there's like a core place where most of these people hang out. And you just walk up and tell them your problem. I think they would help you to solve your problems. And that, that right. could be the simplest thing to do is even if you forget everything we just told you, just walk to the center of the backpacker universe. And I'm always looking for it. I haven't found quite here exactly the core restaurant that I would can say where, you know, almost every expat walks in from time to time. Maybe Pura Vida? There's four of them in a row. There's Pura Vida, Midas Touch, no. Juice Factory, Pura Vida, Midas Touch, and then right around the corner, Charlitas. And that's that's the, where you would Gringo Center. Because he just listed off the four hotels in Vilcabamba, the rest, uh, yeah, their restaurants. So that's what we'd do, and uh, I really wouldn't, I'm not even worried about it, but I will say I do have, I always have two pass, uh, two ATM cards, and I try to have a Cirrus and a Plus, um, mm -hmm. because you have these different international systems. You don't, your card is not really normally MasterCard, it's usually either Cirrus or Plus. You've got to look around in the back, and there's a little name back here. Yeah. I was, I was, I was in Nicaragua. Star. 15 years ago, and I couldn't couldn't use the ATM because I had like a Cirrus and I needed a Plus. Yep. Uh, and I was the same problem in Costa Rica. Now, yeah. all, yeah, that's a long time ago problem. That's why it's good to have two cards. Uh, yep. But now most of the major banks have like several uh, symbols on the back, and they're pretty. And most of them can be used everywhere. The problem is, you know, you're going to have to pay a fee uh, if you're on a tight budget. That can really be a bother, but as I say, before you leave, if you're an American at least, uh, look at Charles Schwab. I told him, told you he was a real traveler. See, a real traveler is somebody that I learned from. I just learned how to save myself, you know, my two, two to five dollar fee every time. I, but when I go yeah. to the ATM card, I pull out the maximum every time. Well, yeah, but look on, uh, for instance, here, it's a dollar fifty for the Bank of Guayaquil, Wachovia. Also wants uh, 250, and then Wachovia also wanted 1% uh, as a currency exchange rate, Ooh. even though it was dollars here and dollars there. Yeah. So, so you have your out, dollar bank account, and you're still getting. Uh, yeah, to take out 300 dollars from Wachovia cost me nine American. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's Which ridiculous. one is that? The one on the end? No, uh, any of the banks, it's, it was roughly like that because most of the fee was from Wachovia. Wachovia I, I went on the one across the, the thing. Is that got the same kind of fees? Yeah. On the other side next to the tourist bureau. Uh, yeah, that's Bank of Guayaquil, and I think it's a uh, fifty. Okay, but no one. And then whatever your no bank one percent. charges. No 1%. I don't, the 1% will be your bank. Okay, well, my, I, I'm, 
the host bank just gets a dollar fifty for you using them. But then the Charles machine. Schwab. So Charles Schwab is a, a good deal. Okay. Yeah. Well, we I hope we answered your question, and uh, thank you very much. Anybody that has any more questions, I'm actually surrounded by a real traveler, so I can always tap into his brain, even when he's reticent. I got him surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> We can pack up tomorrow, tonight let's flip a coin.